Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of our Hera's Guide to 2K. I don't know why I keep putting my name there, but that's the way it is. This is going to be the definitive edition of this guide. I've done one last year on Voobly and it got a lot of traction on YouTube. And people have been asking me for uh, you know, an updated version, so here we are and doing this. Uh, and of course, this is going to be episode 5 or 6, I'm, I've lost track at this point. But anyway, we're going to be doing 1400 ELO today. Uh, and so those watching on YouTube, it's going to be once a week uploaded there to the channel. Um, and uh, those watching on Twitch, we're doing it all in one day. So thank you all for watching in advance and let's hop right into it. And this is not cringe. Stop saying cringe in the chat. Okay. Hello to everyone who's being paused in the chat though. Okay. Uh, <laughs> enough cringe apparently. Let's hop right into this one. Uh, that overlays what we need. And let's update the current ELO to 1400. Okay, perfect. Um, so if you if you think this is cringe, your gameplay is even more cringe. So sh you know, just be quiet, listen up, and uh, hopefully we can cut up the cringe together, my man. All right. Uh, listen, I've seen how you guys are playing. Uh, it's not the cringiest thing, is what I'm doing right now. Anyway, enough uh, enough flaming viewers here. YouTube, this is how we roll around here. Let's just focus on this, and that should be quite good. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll stop being mean. I'll stop being mean. I got a little sidetracked there. Uh, my bad. My bad. Okay. Um, so what, I, what am I doing today? Oh yeah, guide, true. Today we're going to be taking a look at 1400 ELO. And uh, I've got a few tips for you guys today on this ELO. So let's just refocus up and uh, and go for that. So last time we did the men at arm into Archer's build. This time we're going to do another adaptation build. But this time it's going to be the scouts build. Where we're going to open it up with scouts and then transition to skirms afterwards. The reason we're going to need a skirm transition is because skirms counter both spearmen and they counter uh, archers. So if your opponent is going for either pikemen or crossbow to counter your, your knights or to fight off your knights, the skirmishers will be good in fighting those off. If your opponent's going camel, it's a different story. We'll mix in some some monks later. And again, it's all about adapting. So we're going to be focusing on the exact same things we're focusing on last uh, last episode, which is micro uh, and how to improve our game there. Clicking our enemy units to see what their upgrades are looking like. We'll send to spend our resources in Castle Age and expand by adding more military productions in Castle Age as well after we get our town centers down. And then we'll also expand uh, on the sides of the map with our military and really scout the sides, pick up relics, and attack our opponents from different angles instead of playing just straight up down the middle. In Imperial Age, we're going to be expanding our, or, or expanding our map and finding extra gold spots on the sides if we get there. And we're also going to be wanting to make our castles on hills to control the map. All right, so very important to uh, to keep those castles on hills because it lets you have the hill bonus in order to defend those castles and to do more damage to, uh, to enemies coming up the hill and whatnot anyway that's enough talk let's go ahead and hop into a game and showcase some of these uh, um, you know some of these um, I guess verbal lessons in action pretty much so we're gonna go back to our cavalry sieve which is gonna be the maggers uh, scouts and the skirmishers are very good at the maggers they get brace and imperial age so the skirmishers will be really good all the way up until the end of the game okay very nice Okay, so again, it's going to be a standard scouts build. We're going to go up on 21 population. At this point, you've seen me do the start so many times. Uh, we're going to get six on sheep, make our two houses here, and quickly just get our sheep uh, going in a different direction. At this point, when you're 1400, you you know the basic builds. You know the Dark Age. And if, apparently, I don't know the Dark Age, though, because I need to finish that house. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, you know the Dark Age. You know how to scout with sheep at this point. And we're going to be worrying more now about, um, you know, the Feudal Age and a little bit more about Castle Age and Imperial Age. The Dark Age should be done pretty consistently. Just as a reminder, we scout with sheep and we scout with our scouts in arcs to be able to find um, uh, our resources as, as quickly as possible. The faster you scout you yourself, the faster you can scout your opponent and see uh, their map and their strategy. Alright, very nice. So let's get those uh, sheep back in there. Get the sheep on the front right back. Going to continue scouting. Again, don't scout backwards. Scout always to so you're, again, in an arc. Because you keep taking away the, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the shade. Uh, what does it call it? What did I call this? The unexplored territory. You keep uh, exploring more territory, I guess you can say. Alright, I'm going to take this, again, back wood line. We're usually going to have two wood lines that we need anyway. So let's find two that are good. One on the front, one on the back is good. Generally speaking, taking the one on the front could be better. Not gonna explain why. Well, I, I will real quick. It's not too important. Basically, if you get pushed off the front wood line, taking it first makes it so uh, if you get you know if you get pushed off it later, you at least taken you've at least taken quite a bit of it so that your back wood line is still quite healthy. Still not gonna be dealing with any deers for now. All right, three on wood. We'll take our first boar here. Very good. 
But again, on the flip side with the wood lines, if you take the ba the back one from the start, you're you're keeping yourself safe against uh, a lot of rushes like men at arms and drush that are really early. Oh yeah, so now I've, I've scattered pretty much everything on the map. As just a little bit of a um, a review from the last episode, keep in mind I've scattered all my golds one, two, and three, both stones and all my sheep and all my boar. So once you found that, you can go scout your opponents. Very very simple. I'll go in there. This is gonna be more of an advanced boarder. I want to keep him under my town center until I'm finished my sheep. We're starting to talk about some efficiencies of Dark Age now. Last time I skipped out on these, this time I want to really talk about them. So that's definitely one efficiency you can have there. Not have any decay on the sheep and how to manipulate the boar to achieve that pretty much, okay? They're very efficient right there. Another efficiency is to only build the mill with one villager. Because if you build it with two, uh, and oh no, sorry, you have to gather forage with the other one. Don't let you leave it idle. If you build it with two, it actually makes it slower per villager. So it's better to... Uh, use or to build with one and use the other ones to gather berries right away. Gonna constantly look for my opponent now. And I'm gonna pick up my next boar again, time it so that it comes back in when you have the boar already done. Okay, I'm scouting my opponent again. I'm staying in places where my opponent can't be. I'm staying near the edge of the map, he can't be there. Near the stone, he can't be there. Alright, there's this boar here as well. I'm near the edge of the map, he can't be here at the moment. Alright, so another kind of advanced boiler here. Go ahead and bring him up there. And yep, just finished my boar. And we'll be able to pull in the boar. If he runs away, you can just take him back. And there we go. And that's actually no decay right there on the food. Cool. Good. Now this is the 18 pop villager. Alright, we're going to go ahead and pick him up. And go ahead and make a house on the front. Okay, so now we have a house builder on the front. The next villagers will go towards the uh, uh, the wood. Obviously, I'm going to be doing the standard scouts builder. The only difference is I'm going to be doing an adaptation of it and making skirmishers in the feudal age to counter, like I said, my opponent's archers or my opponent's uh, spearmen. Okay, good. After this guy makes the house, you're going to go ahead and make a lumber camp. I'll make it here. Should be an easy wall here long term. Notice how I'm planning my map now. You can start doing that. I can wall this later, make my buildings on the front to protect my forward gold as well. Alright, next villager will go here. And again, I know I'm going to have the perfect amount of food to click up because it's a builder. It's like a mathematical equation. If nothing goes wrong in the equation, you don't, I don't know, accidentally carry over another one, you're always going to get the same result. Same thing with the builder, and this is why they're so important to get down. I'm always going to get the same result. I always have enough to click up at this point because I'm doing the same thing every time. And there's not much variation between it besides some small, uh, you know, walking time or some small efficiency. So, again, as long as you don't mess up, your builder will be the exact same every single time. And I really want to stress just how consistent you can make your game by learning these builders. Very, very important. Okay, so now we make a house and then our barracks. It's very standard stuff. I'm making my barracks and my stable towards my opponent. Now I want to find where I can actually hit him. Similar to the men at arm guide. Or the men at arm strategy we did last time. Notice again, I'm being a little bit more efficient, taking only one sheep at a time. Um, I want to find a place to hit him, similar to the men at arm strategy here. Let's send a second villager to make our barracks, so that afterwards you can make our stable with two bills right away. Is he taking wood here? I need to, yeah, okay, so he's taking wood here. So I can attack him right here. Yeah, it's two lumber camps. And I can attack him at his berries, okay? So I have two places to attack him. Let's go ahead and do that as soon as we click up to feudal age. Alright, and at this point, like I said, this should be quite standard. At this point, you know everything I've done up to now. It's just been a build order. Uh, and a bit more of a, you know, efficiency with it. Okay, now we're going to do our stable. And there it is. And we get both our eco upgrades. Notice I'm tabbing between them. I already showed you guys how to do this. Quick, you know, quick reminder though. If you just go to Lumber Camp with Hockey, go to Mill with Hockey, and then pick up both eco upgrades very quickly. At this point, I'm going to gather my scouts all together. And then as soon as you have 60 wood, just drop farms. You can start making your farms after you click Horse Collar. Because as long as the farm finishes um, before Horse Collar finishes, you'll get the food. The extra food. Or after Horse Collar finishes, you'll get the extra food on it. So don't be afraid of that. Okay, cool. And again, we want to make some walls now. Alright, so when he's done all building all of this, I'm going to send him to wood. And this villager will go up here and start walling on top. I'm going to just wall downwards. Or, or maybe even in a circle. We'll see. I'll wall in a circle. And now with my scouts, I'm not going to waste time. I'm going to attack with two scouts right away. And again, use my control group here. I have my stable on control group 3. 
Skeleton control group one. So I just click three, right click here, and that gets me the control group, or sorry, the waypoint right there. All right. So look how efficient this builder is being made. Scouts on stand ground. Same thing as men at arms, guys. This game is not too complicated when you really break it down. We put our men at arms on stand ground. We're going to put our scouts on stand ground for the same exact purpose. They focus fire or they focus target the same villager. The reason is you want to kill villagers. You don't want to just weaken them. So let's go ahead and go through this. Two scouts attacking. We won't necessarily be blocking because scouts don't need to block when they have only two. Okay, let's chase her down. Let's chase her down. We want to really kill the villagers. Now we'll run we'll away. We'll make for the next scouts. Constantly making farms. Constantly making scouts. And you want to make scouts until you're fully walled. Again, I already mentioned this last time. Uh, so we'll start fully walling on this side. Cool. All right, too many villagers. Let's run away. One villager isolated. We kill that. And of course, maggers get free foraging. So your scout rush is even stronger. You even get cheaper scouts. Gotta itch here a little bit. Chase this guy, get him, and run away. Using your mobility is very, very important. And while I just go ahead and wall at home, keep our TC running, and keep our scouts on stand ground. I can show you how it looks like on aggressive if you guys want. So if you have scouts on aggressive now, look at their on aggressive stance. So I want to kill I don't know this man. Or no, I want to kill this woman. She's uh, she's at you know she's at low HP. All I did was click. Why is he attacking that one? I didn't tell him to do that, but he's attacking that one. And that is what aggressive stance does. You don't want this to happen. Stand ground now. I want to hit this woman. Oh, oh, let's go for this one. It's a bit deeper in. This guy's an aggressive. He went to hit that one. They will only hit the target. He only hits the target. That's the difference between stand ground and, and aggressive right there. Very cool. Now we're pushing 13 minutes. 13.30. Let's go ahead and get a mining camp on the gold. Again, one tile space is very nice. Okay. And let's just make sure we're fully walled. Yeah, we are. Very cool. Run away from Spearman. Again, I'm playing a little bit quicker here. Notice that. I'm playing a little bit quicker. All right. Let's get that going. We'll get five over there. And again, we're going to continue making scouts until we're fully walled. That doesn't change. I'm going to just qu quickly make some uh, some walls here. And at this point, we're going to also want to get a range down. Sorry, I should have made my range before the, uh, before the mining camp. That was actually a mistake on my end. All right, I'm going to make a range right now, and that's going to help me get a few skirms out in the field. I should have made it before my mining camp. That was my fault, and I'll start making some scouts, okay? I'm still walling with a couple of villagers here, and I'm fully walled on this side. And now after I have five to gold, after this guy finishes, he'll go to gold. I'll make my wheelbarrow. Why not just walk to the edge of the map? You could. That's probably, that, that, yeah, that would probably be better. That was my fault. I walled in a circle. That was a mistake, though. That was actually a big mistake, because now I need to wall this side. Okay, well, some some walling mistakes for me, that's true. You have to wall most efficient place, and I didn't do that here. So learn from what I didn't do, and do you guys yourselves. Very good. But anyway, we'll get a blacksmith now, we get some skirms down. So the reason we want skirms now is to counter his spearmen, and to make our scouts just so much more powerful. You're going to see exactly what I'm talking about. But meanwhile, our scouts, and again, if I can't see farms, you send them to wood. That's the roll with berries. All right. So we'll get, okay, so we get some damage in here. Uh, so many spears from him now. I need the skirmishes. You pick up the fletching here. We'll continue making some uh, some villagers here. And now with the skirms are out, you need to mass them a little bit here. And you can start picking off some of these spearmen. And I'm going to keep both my unit groups on stand ground. And that's the most efficient uh, stance to have them on. Cool, I'm finished walling finally. So now I can send everything back to, uh, so these walls kind of suck. Uh, that's my fault though. I'm going to go back to just sending some those to wood. And I'm getting housed as well. Hey, see the mistakes start to pile up here. And once you get a few skirmishes and fletching, you can actually go ahead and attack your opponent here. And okay, he's got a spearman. We'll clean him up with the skirmishers. Save the HP on the scouts. And we just hit and run with the skirmishers. All right, hit and run. Look at that. So much value I'm getting here. So much value from these skirmishers. If he had a lot of archers, I would get armor as well. All right, he's got a lot. I could just run back. Spearmen are very weak, and I could use my, my scouts to snipe the archers. In fact, as I'm kiting away the skirmishers. All right, and as I get close to Castle Age, and look how stronger my scouts can actually take fights now. My, my scouts can actually take fights now that you know I have these skirmishers on the field, whereas before I'd have to just run away from every spearman. So that's really the difference between scouts into knights and scouts into skirmishers. Okay. All right, so now it's basically the same thing as a knight build. We're gonna get 
armor attack on the on the on the scouts. We can get armor on scrims if you need it. In this case, he doesn't have a lot of archers, so we don't need it. And now look at the scouts. Look how much stronger they are. If you guys think back to the the earlier um, the earlier build where we did scouts into knights, I had to wait till castage to kill spears. Now look at this. I'm taking them completely on in fuel age, and my scouts are now completely beastly, completely beastly, because I have just six skirmishers to kill spears. All right. So it's it's a very big difference. It's a very small change to make a very big difference. That's how I would describe uh, this build order with the adaptation of making skirmishers. Okay, and again, control group 1 for my skirmishers, control group 2 for my scouts. I always make my range unit control 1. And I'm just going to completely destroy my opponent from here. Okay, so again, this build order is just meant to be an adaptation that's slightly harder to do. Because it's slightly harder to mix in skirmishers and still hit a good time. But with good practice, it becomes very reasonable to do this. And the idea is at this yellow at 1300, you should be quite familiar with scouts into knights that now you can start learning how to mix in skirmishers. You could do it at previous elos, but make sure you're doing it properly and make sure you know why you're doing it. Okay. So this is 1400, of course, that we're talking about. These advanced builds, 1300, 1400, should know how to do them. And now we just get knights. So it's a very standard build order. Now knights are coming out like the scouts into knights. We'll get a you know TC TC on another wood line. I need a secondary gold. There it is. Get a TC there. You usually build them with four or five villagers. Uh, sorry, three to four villagers. And again, the scrims will pick up spears all game, basically. All game, we just pick up spearmen. Very cool. And now knights are coming out. And there's just no chance for your opponent. He, he lost too many units for free. Alright. And now knights are out. And now I stop making scrims. Scrims is just a feudal age unit. Alright. It's just a feudal age unit. Don't think of it as something you need to commit to in Castle Age. Our plan is to get the Knights in Castle Age. Now I have fully upgraded Knights. The Skirmishers just help me get there, help me survive if needed, or help me do more damage with my Scouts if my opponent was being passive. Alright, so again, Knights now will be on Control Group 1 because it's now my main unit. And Skirmishers on Control Group 2. This is just my personal preference though. Okay. Very nice. And yeah, I mean, not much to talk about, right? We're just completely destroying the AI at this point. So there's not much to say. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So again, this is the extreme AI, so he won't resign. But against a, against a regular human, if you were here, I would say the game is completely over. Um, you've you've gotten knights when he's still in the Feudal Age. You've done tons of damage when you had the Skirmishers out. Skirmishers are still getting value by sniping Spears. Um, and you're still harassing him with constant knight production. And then back home, we do the standard. We spend our resources. Say it with me, chat. We spend our resources. I, I've talked about this so much. Um, it should really be ingrained. So I've got well, I've got a little bit of gold. Let's make a monastery. If I had a little bit of wood, I'd make a market. If I had, you know, too much food, I don't know. Maybe I'd make some, you know, husbandry upgrade. Maybe some attack upgrades if I didn't get them for free using magyars. So always something to spend our resources on. Spend the resources. Very, very important. It's probably the best tip you can ever hear in Castle Age. It's so important. Spend your resources on anything that makes sense. It's just how to develop. Also, we're going to need a Sandy or a Bob. In this case, I have another Sandy. I've had a lot of Sandys today. Sandy is our house villager. She's going to make houses to the day she dies or to when we have 200 pop. So either she will thrive in her job and see success or she will just do it until she dies and be a very loyal citizen to us as she builds houses and houses our population. Very, very nice. Okay, so now I'm just moving around with our knights. Very good. And just spending the resources again. So again, this episode we focus a lot about micro and stances. But at this point, once you get the castle age, it becomes less about individual micro. You can start to take fights like this under the town center. Because as I said earlier in another episode, knights and castle age are a lot more resilient to the town center compared to let's say scouts and feudal age. So don't be afraid to use your units under the opponent's town center like so. It's not about individual micro anymore. Not about blocking villages. It's just about overrunning your opponent and constantly developing your base back home. All right, so now I've got uh, I've got a lot of gold. Or sorry, I've got a lot of wood. I'll make a market. I can maybe even get hand carts. That's a nice upgrade to pick up. Constantly raid. All right, constantly produce units. <coughs> All right, good stuff. 
All right, now I'm lacking gold. I have all my upgrades. I can get the farm upgrade. I can make more knights. Look at my resources below 100 at like pretty much all times. As, as much as I can below 100. If they rise, it's a mistake. I should be spending them. At least at this point. Uh, okay, another lumber camp. Consider this as an investment. Another lumber camp is like an investment. It's like getting an eco upgrade. Spend 100 wood now, you get more wood later. <clears throat> Alright, so as we get to late castle age, I want to talk about expansion for a little bit. So, so far, let's take a look and pause. So far, I'm in my base, right? I've got my 3TC, my monasteries here, and I'm attacking down the center. However, there's literally a whole other journey here. The, look at look how much dark areas there are on the map. I have never even explored that. We want to start making use of this map. Why do you want to make use of the map? Because there's extra resources there available to us that we can use in the cast or in the late castle age or in the imperial age. So let's go ahead and do that. You don't want to do it with the military on the front because that's the one attacking. But you want to do it with your monks, for example. You pick up the relic here, bring that guy back. You pick up the relic here, bring that guy back, and you'll make a monk to go explore that top area. All right. Also, with some villagers, you'll start to expand towards those areas. And we'll make some, I don't know, some stables outside our base. We might make some outposts after we gather some stone. So at this point, maybe get taking some stone for that purpose of making outposts can be a good idea. We'll delete some of our walls. It's very important to delete some of our walls that are no longer needed because the map is just a lot more, um, or we have a lot more room on the map because we're attacking pretty much. Dandy's still making some houses at the back. Her job doesn't change, unfortunately. Um, or fortunately, depending on how good she is. Spend our resources, they're getting kind of stockpiled now. I could actually use another stable. I could use a, a university, because you'll need that building to click up to Imperial Age. So let's do that. Again, let's spread them out. Let's take some map. Take some map. We don't want to lose them too much to the town center. Let's just go back. Very cool. Make some vills. I've got a lot of wood. Let's spend that out. For that more food income will be, will be really good for Knights long term here. All right, this monk is done, so let's go scout with that guy. Scouting with this guy. And again, look at the mini-map. Look at the mini-map. Don't you feel like it's much better? You can actually breathe now. Okay, after you get our university, we can click up here so we can sell some wood. Get ready to click up here. Look at the mini-map. It's just going to be completely explored. I'm now making more you know, advancements here as I continue to develop. And at this point, once you click Imperial Age, you can even send some villagers to get outposts on the side. I'm just giving you guys options. Outpost on this side. And I'm going to really make use of the entire map right now. Okay. And I'm constantly attacking my opponent throughout all this. You don't you don't go explore with your main army. You explore with your secondary units. Any scouts you have that are alive, you will explore with those guys. You don't explore with your knights. You attack with your knights. You explore with your monks. You explore with your villagers. And my plan is just to continue making knights now until he resigns, pretty much. So... There again, very good, very good. Okay, we can use some stone now. Sorry about that, that's not good. We want to make, leave one tile space for stone as well. Uh, you know what? I want another town center. I want to expand my base. Let's get a town center out here. Why not? Someone give me one good reason why that town center is a bad idea. Okay, extra gold that I found as well, that I found. I can make a town center, I can't afford it right now though, so I'll continue expanding. And that extra gold and an extra stone is going to really help your late game. So you know what? We'll get some villagers down there. And since I took a lot of bills off wood, I'll try to replace them. Here, this will go there, this will go there. And you know what? This gold that, that, that I have at the back, I'll make a lumber camp here. And the knights have constantly raided my opponent, so my opponent is completely dead. But again, if in a real game, if it's completely even at this point, I'm trading versus military, we both have a good economy. He's going to try to expand to this side. He's going to take the extra resources. I'm going to expand to this side. I'll take these extra resources. When I have to make a castle, I'll make a castle here. I'll make a castle right here. This is probably the best spot for it. Right here is good to control these resources. Right here at the back to defend my base. There's a lot of things to do, but you have to scout the map to do so. And I'm not just leaving myself cramped. Look at this. I'm expanding, deleting the walls, expanding. The stables are pushing forward. Uh, the TC is going to the side. And the exploration is going. I have Magellan here on the other side of the globe. Very, very nice. Okay. And that's uh, pretty much what you should be focusing on. 1400 ELO. Oh, we didn't GG him. Always GG, guys. We have to be, we have to be very nice. Sorry. Oh, GG, even though he didn't. And that's it for this episode. Catch you guys next week for the 1500 ELO and the tips and tricks that I have for you guys there. Peace.